Today's video tackles integrating static application security scanners into your Bitbucket pipelines. We'll explore three awesome free options for smaller teams. We'll throw the same test target at each scanner and see which one finds the most bugs. This is a website specifically designed for ethical hackers to practice their skills. It's loaded with various vulnerabilities, like SQL injection and cross-site scripting, exactly what a good SAST scanner should sniff out. I'll copy the URL for this repository, so we can import it into Bitbucket. Let's head to bitbucket.org. First, we'll create a new repository. Then we need to click the link for importing a repository and paste the URL we just copied. That was easy. Now we have the entire repository in Bitbucket. Next, we'll configure the pipeline. I'll start by creating a template of the pipeline using the web UI, and then we'll clone the repository to my local machine. Before running anything in the cloud, it's best to test the code locally so you can compare the results. Debugging locally is always easier because you have better visibility. Just a heads up, I'm using a MacBook in this video, but all the commands work just fine on Windows or Linux too. Let's also run npm install to set up the test target environment, so it's ready for scanning. Now it's time for our first SAST scanner, Sneak. To fire it up, we'll need an authentication token. Head over to Sneak's website, sign up for an account and grab your token from the account settings. My account is authenticated, so we can run the scan command. Running the scan takes some time but I'll fast forward the video a bit. Look at that 21 code issues found, exactly what we were hoping for. Remember, you can always validate your scanner setup by trying another one. So, let's configure our next scanner, SEMGREP. The easiest way to install SEMGREP on any operating system is through Python. Now that we have the scanner, it's time to authenticate with SEMGREP login. I've already done this, but it will open a browser and ask you to log in to your registered SEMGREP account, it's pretty straightforward. Now run the scan with SEMGREP CI. Another fast-forward, patience is a virtue but video time is precious. SEMGREP found 20 findings. Here's a heads up. Don't get hung up on comparing raw totals between scanners. It's all about the details. Sometimes scanners might report the same issue multiple times if there are different ways to exploit it. Now let's get Sonar Cube configured. We'll use NPM for installation then head over to sonarcloud.com to set up a new project. That's where you'll snag your authentication token and the scan command parameters.
The analysis was successful, and there's a link to the scan report. All good. Now we can move on to configuring the scans in Bitbucket. First, we'll try setting things up through the Bitbucket integrations menu. But spoiler alert, it's not ideal for our purposes. It's an important lesson. When configuring any security scanners, you must double check with another scanner. If your scanner is misconfigured, you risk dangerous false negatives, meaning it might show no security issues even when there are some. Misconfigurations have been a significant problem in security scanners for as long as I can remember. I'll fast forward to the scan results, so you can see why this doesn't work. There's only one security issue, whereas our local scan found over 20. The reason is that this scan only searches for open source vulnerabilities. It's not a SAST scan, and I couldn't find a way to configure it as such. There may be a way, but generally it's better to configure the scan in a way you're sure works. So, let's do it another way. I'll clean up the previous code and make the build step a non-parallel step, so it always runs first. After that, there will be three parallel steps, each running one of our three different scans. Configuring Sneak works best when you do it with NPM. It works the same in all CI-CD environments. It's easy, and you can always configure it the same way. Plus, it's quick and reliable. Remember, when it comes to security scans, confidence is key. Configuring an authentication token in a YML file must be done with a secret variable. We can do this in Bitbucket by going to Repository Settings, and then Repository Variables. Grab the token from your sneak.io account. Make sure to click the secured checkbox so the variable will be encrypted and masked from the logs. This way the token won't leak outside the development team. The final step for Sneak involves setting up HTML reporting and defining the report file as an artifact. Next, we'll add a semgrep scan. Let's find the instructions on how to do it. The semgrep scan can be easily configured using the semgrep docker image. I've done this in most popular CI-CD services, and it works well in all of them. In the script part, we only need to define the token, and then run the scan with the same command as in the local scan. If you want to customize the scan, you can do it with command line parameters, just like in the local scan. To get the authentication token, sign in to semgrep.dev, navigate to Settings and then Tokens. Create a new one and copy it.
Next up is SonarCube. Caching node will speed up the pipelines, so it's good to add. I'll use npm to install the sonar scanner since our build image is node, but there are many ways to install sonar and they all work well. Now, head back to your sonar cloud project to grab the token and command needed for the script. I'll change the command to a one-line command, and then we're ready to see if the YML script works. Let's git add, commit push and the pipeline will start running automatically. So let's head to Bitbucket to view the running process. Once again, these runs take a couple of minutes, so I'll fast forward the video a bit. Let's open the sneak report first. Sneak found SQL injections, path traversal, denial of service, cross-site request forgery, and cookies without the secure attribute. The last one can lead to cross-site scripting. Very good. It looks like Sneak found all the different types of vulnerabilities. Next up is the SEMGREP report. SEMGREP also identified various issues, tainted SQL strings, session fixation, potentially leading to XSS, path traversal, file uploads, and cross-site request forgery. Looks like SEMGREP caught everything we expected as well. The last report is the Sonar Scan Report. Since Sonar is primarily a code quality scanner, it found 14 software quality issues that aren't security related, and 7 security issues.
The sonar scan found only SQL injections. Sonar has a background in quality scanning, and even though this is just a small scan with a specific version of a development framework, it suggests that sonar might be better suited for code quality scanning. However, it's not a good idea to jump to conclusions based on this alone. So let's recap. Sneak and SEMGREP found all the different types of issues. Sonar found only SQL injections and missed XSS, RFI, file upload, C-surf, and session hijacking. All the scanners found denial of service issues. Despite the differences in results, upgrading the Express framework could fix many of the security issues, as all the scanners identified it as vulnerable. That concludes our tutorial. I showed you how to run three scanners on a local machine and in the Bitbucket pipeline. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section. If you liked the video, please share it with your colleagues. Thanks for watching.